How's everybody doing? I'm between you and the break, so I, I have the bar high. Um, um, excited to be speaking here. Um, we heard a lot about uh, you know, how uh, multi-cloud is becoming increasingly a reality. Applications are becoming portable by virtue of all the work that has been done in the Kubernetes and the microservices ecosystem. Um, as a distributed database, we are very excited as to the promise that it brings when it comes to the, the, the final frontier around uh, multi-cloud portability for uh, you know, data-centric applications. So with that, let's drive right in. Um, we believe that there is a fundamental need today uh, to uh, reimagine the database architecture, uh, especially now that we are in the multi-cloud era. Uh, there are two, two aspects that are happening here. First is there is a, a need that is being brought to us from the uh, fine-grained microservices applications that are increasingly being built. Those, those paradigms are leading us to two critical needs uh, for databases. First is SQL as the API layer for building these applications, because SQL allows us to model relationships, you know, foreign key constraints, joins, um, and last but not the least, allows us to model distributed transactions. All that allows a developer writing an application to be highly agile, write fast, uh, using all the data modeling constructs that have been battle-hardened over 40 years of SQL. And then secondly, uh, something that the SQL world has never had uh, at its disposal, which is massive horizontal write scalability, ability to start small and grow as big as we like, uh, something that was previously reserved for the NoSQL databases, but SQL databases never had it. So that, those are the two that the applications are bringing in. Then there are two additional needs that the composable um, cloud or multi-cloud as we call it are bringing in. First is um, the need for tolerating failures um, in the commodity um, infrastructure world that we live in today. Disks, compute, network, even entire clouds uh, will fail and as a result ability to tolerate those failures uh, is, becomes very important. And secondly, um, today if we take all the clouds combined, um, if last count it was close to 200 different regions or data centers that are literally at our fingertips to, to deploy and program our applications against. Um, and that, those, uh, those data centers give us a lot of uh, flexibility around how we build low latency applications for our users, how do we tolerate complete um, you know, uh, region level failures, um, how do we um, need, uh, meet the needs of uh, various governance and compliance requirements like GDPR. So with these four uh, architectural needs in front of us, um, we believe the time is ripe for a new uh, entire database architecture, and we call it distributed SQL, um, because it allows developers to program applications fast. It allows operations engineers to deploy those applications um, as and where they need to be deployed with uh, all the right uh, efficient constructs uh, built in. And finally, it allows the business to drive home the velocity around competitive advantages. And that's what we have tried to build at Yugabyte DB. It's a fully open source uh, project um, which focuses on um, low latency applications um, as well as uh, it allows the applications and the database to be deployed um, into Kubernetes and, as we'll see, um, into crossplay. Um, and um, on the open source front, I want to point out um, that we have actually taken the opposite stance of many of the recent database uh, licensing changes. We are a 100% open source database, um, including enterprise-grade features such as distributed backups, encryption at rest, change data capture, asynchronous replication across multiple regions, and so on. Now that I have uh, you know, highlighted what the database architecture for the multi-cloud world looks like, I want, you to, I want to walk you through the, the multi-cloud maturity model. Most applications today probably are in this mono-cloud level one, where uh, multiple instances of the database are deployed across multiple availability zones, but in a single cloud. 
okay? And, and naturally, it is a single region. It allows us to tolerate region-level failures, uh, sorry, uh, zone-level failures, but region-level failures is, is, is hard. The nirvana is actually when we can run the same cluster, few, few instances in cloud one, few instances in cloud two, few instances in cloud three, um, because it allows us to uh, diversify our risk. We, it, it allows us to exploit whatever the, uh, each of the clouds give us uh, from, uh, from a compute and storage standpoint. However, uh, this last one is, is hard because it requires the operations engineering to get to a level where um, the same cluster can be orchestrated across three clouds. There are intermediate stages where many of our users and many of the community users are going towards which look like this. First is monocloud multi-region where you take a single cloud and just start geo-distributing your clusters across multiple regions. And the second one is uh, the starting point of multi-cloud where you can run app-specific best-of-breed clusters in different clouds. You can even use uh, features like asynchronous replication to use a second cloud as your failover cloud. Obviously, uh, you have to ensure that asynchronous replication continues to move uh, the data at a, at a periodic basis so that when you cut over or fail over to the new cloud, you are able to see that your data. Otherwise, your uh, application portability that depends on underlying database layer will not be instantaneous. So where does Yugabyte DB and Crossplane fit into this equation? We see that um, if Yugabyte DB is the, is the multi-cloud database that is ready to be deployed at uh, the cloud of your choice, Crossplane naturally becomes the control plane to orchestrate such a move uh, or such a deployment on day one. So that is going to be my demo. Here is what the demo setup looks like. Um, as Bassam pointed out, uh, Crossplane gets deployed uh, onto a Kubernetes cluster. Let's call it the control plane cluster. And then you install various stacks onto Crossplane, which extend the Kubernetes objects that are available to you. Um, and then you start, have the ability to deploy applications um, in a cloud neutral manner to any of the three public cloud, public clouds. Specifically for Kubernetes, you have uh, you know, the GCP stack, the AWS stack, and the Azure stack which allows you to deploy application to GKE, AKS, and another AKS. And then if you want to deploy stateful applications, then you deploy the Rook stack onto this control plane cluster. With this as the prerequisite, now we are ready to deploy a uh, multi-cloud application onto one of these clusters. And the way we are going to do that is using this Kubernetes application construct from Crossplane. We'll first deploy a stateful Kubernetes application using the Rook operator for Yugabyte DB. And that will allow us to instantiate a PostgreSQL instance because Yugabyte DB is Postgres compatible. And then we'll instantiate another stateless Kubernetes application which is a e-commerce application, a bookstore. And then through claims, this recently instantiated application can now interact with this Postgres installation uh, instance that had been just provisioned. With that, let me dive into the demo. I am starting off at a point where we have instantiated the, the control plane cluster, we've instantiated the underlying cloud provider uh, actual clusters where the database is going to be deployed. And now I'm going to simply go ahead and install my Rook operator for Yugabyte DB. It's as simple as kubectl apply Rook operator. And then I can go and introspect that app Kubernetes application and see that I have been scheduled onto the remote cluster, which in case this case is the GKE cluster. And I can actually also see 
the underlying uh, the the various underlying Kubernetes constructs that were installed as a result of this operator now being installed onto the cluster. And th those there, there are the namespace, the cluster role, the role binding, all the stuff that the glue code that you would need to start managing your cluster on GKE. Now, all we have to do is claim a Postgres instance out of this operator so that we can power our actual e-commerce application. And that's what we're doing here. Now a real Yugabyte DB cluster has been instantiated onto GKE. And that's what we'll see. Let's keep going. And once this PostgreSQL instance is alive, now we're ready to bring up our application. And that application does not know what, whether it is, I mean, previously as we saw in, in others, you know, Jared's demo, they were all using managed services of the same cloud provider, right? In this case, you get an actually an in-cluster alternative, fully open source, a highly scalable Postgres database sitting next to your application so that you don't have to during, you know, all your uh, development, testing, and even production, you don't have to rely on an expensive proprietary managed service. Now that the, uh, database cluster is up and running. I'm ready to instantiate my actual application. And there you go. My application has now been scheduled. I will now find out the uh, UI uh, endpoint of that application by introspecting. I'll, I'll introspect the resources first and, and see all the resources, deployment, namespace, and service, naturally, and then Finally, I will see what the IP address of the application is. And I get an IP address. And all I have to do is open up that IP address on the particular port that the application is running on. That's it. I now have my database uh, powering this application all inside a single Kubernetes cluster without relying on any external managed service um, as, as part of the multi-cloud deployment. Now, if I want to change this cluster over to Amazon's Kubernetes service or Azure's Kubernetes service, all I have to do is go apply the same command again and the workload will start moving over onto the next cluster. So without doing any expensive operations engineering and using the common constructs that various open pro source projects like Crossplane have brought forward, uh, we are able to ensure that a stateful application is getting portable across multiple clouds. So as Basam pointed out, all these open source projects take a village to develop. Um, we would love for all of you to join our community um, uh, the Slack channel, the GitHub pages, give us feedback. We're working um, hand in hand with the Crossplane team to make more of the multi-cloud uh, scenarios um, documented, demonstrated, so that users like you can actually use those as starting points and build your applications from there on. Uh, last but not the least, we're at KubeCon uh, tomorrow uh, at the sponsor showcase. Visit us at our booth. Thank you so much.